Alright, once again, a day late, but not a dollar short. Still right on time. <laughs> We're back. Welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people, and we've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the regular guys, random thoughts. Married at first sight, season 14, finale, finale. Like, this is it, it. Last episode. Yeah, uh, season 14, that is. This, this is getting, yes, this, this last, getting last time you're going to see. For season 14. This brother talking about Married at First Sight. The people have spoken. They need you to do season 15. Well, the, the people need to take a tall glass to shut the hell up. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We'll give you a week or two to think about it. In the meantime, let's go ahead and recap <laughs> season 14. Where are they now? And for those of you wondering what the hell is going on with Terrell, why is he acting like this? Because this is your first time to the show. Here's the thing. He's not a big reality TV fan and, you know, kind of gave a bonnet after Rock of Love or, um, you know, leading into once they dropped Rock of Love. So he's like, you know what? Here's what I'll do. Um, I'll never watch The Bachelor until... There is a Black Bachelor, which was a safe bet until the pandemic hit and enter Matt James. So since he was stuck watching it, me being the good friend I am, I watched it with him. In return, him being the good friend he is, he decided to watch Married at First Sight season 13 with me. He decided reluctantly to watch season 13 (laughs) with me. And then halfway through that season, I have no idea what possessed him to do it, but he made a deal with the devil. Another one. And said, if Gil and Merlin make it to decision day, then he'll do season 14. Well, here we are, wrapping up season 14. Where are they now? And yes, prayer warriors, we need you to unite because season 15 is a couple weeks away. So we'll give them a couple weeks to think on it. I made a deal with the devil for in season 14 that if Chris and Alyssa mm-hmm. were to make it, I would mm-hmm. do season 15. Well, you know, we see what happened. It's not meant to be. Well, technically they made it because they're here. <laughs> they're not together but they they, <laughs> they survived the season does that count <laughs> no no <laughs> all right well let's go run this down and start with some of the couples before they get to the getaway um lindsey and mark um how do i say this in the most terrible way possible well i i think there was a more physically confident Lindsay at the beginning mm-hmm. of the season to where yeah. she's at now. And so if California is, is everything is great, you found bliss, she doesn't look as happy as she was. I think that she <coughs> she got a chance to finally watch herself. Yeah. And, you know, realize what's going on in her world. Whereas Mark, I think she's helped him in a way. And he even mentioned that when they signed the divorce papers. Yeah. That He's helped her be more strong, you know, be more stronger, which I could see that he's lost weight. He's feeling good. Um, and I'm glad that she apologized to him. Uh, but that's good, what I was good. about to say. Even, even with the apology, it, it seemed genuine. And it's to me, it seemed that she she it's, it's crazy how it went through this episode, because at the very beginning, she had a very skewed view of herself. Right. But then as the episode went through and they got to the, the divorce signing, um, you know, it was really interesting to see her then just kind of because of course you saw the look at his face and she said hey um can i say something and he looked like ah oh, shit i signed these papers so i wouldn't have to hear this again but <laughs> come to find out she wanted to offer an apology and it was great because i thought her apology was pretty genuine and it showed growth yeah. in her because she's like you know i hadn't seen this by the reunion and then when i watched it i'm like oh all right that was bad and the fact that she actually had that because you i think i even said like, you knew you were mic'd. You knew they were going to run with this. You knew you were talking to the producers. And to her to her point, she's like, I'm enraged at the point. I'm talking to the producer. I'm just venting to the producer. And you're probably at that point not even thinking, well, the producer's going to leave this in. While the producer's just thinking, oh, we're definitely going to leave this in. <laughs> this is gold. Pro- producer's just sitting there. <laughs> Tell me more about that, Lizzie. Uh, he's what? <laughs> Speak up yeah, in your mic. What? Speak up in your mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, and here's my thought when, when she had that apology is I was listening for her verbiage and she said, I'm sorry you had to hear that. Mm-hmm. But it's not so much. I'm sorry. I should never have said that. Right. It's just I'm sorry you had to hear it. But I still think it was the most genuine 
Lindsay apology he was going to get. Um, hopefully he can move on and... Wait a minute. First things first. You're not for the apology tour, so I thought you would actually like the fact that she apologized that way. Because here's the thing about this. You said... I mean, it, this is what she said. I'm sorry you had to hear that. She didn't say, I'm sorry for what I said, because exactly. she meant what she said. Exactly. She meant it in the moment, and that's one thing you're big on. So I thought you would actually be, you know, like, like that's the kind of apology you'd expect. Like, I'm sorry you had to hear that, because that was just me venting. You didn't need to hear that, especially in that form. Right. And I said that I noticed that that's how she said it, <laughs> but that's the most Lindsay apology Mark is going to get. <laughs> so I didn't say it was... Bad or good. You yeah. know, you meant those words. <laughs> but she said, I apologize that you had to hear that. Mm -hmm. But that's what Mark, all Mark wanted was, I'm sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Now he can move on and yeah. move on. It looks like maybe he has. Yeah, he finally went out on a date and seemed pretty awkward on it. Um, but at least he was having fun. And I just wonder if that's real. It's like this really noise friend. And she liked Mark. I mean, I just want. I'm betting that. Hey, we need to end on a good note. Yes. Um, I need a blonde, mm -hmm. some attractive, nice smile, not mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. To go on no a but. date with Mark. No yeah. but. We need no but. No but allowed. No but. <laughs> and then, because the part that gave it away that it was so cheap was the fact and fake was the fact that as they're like, okay, and so we'll do it again. Yes. And they hold hands and go skipping out. I'm like. Yeah, no, nah, that was written for TV, definitely. Um, Katina and Olajuwon, I feel like I really want to believe that what Katina is saying is genuine, and I'm going to try to believe it, um, and and there, how happy she is, and this is the best thing for her ever, ever, ever. I'm going to try my best to believe it, but... Mm. My thought is, I don't care. I think <laughs> if they're happy, fine. You like uh -huh. it? I love it. I, I don't. I don't have to. It doesn't. It doesn't impact me, at all. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to keep talking about them anymore. Let them be, and if that works for them, great. I do like though when so when Jeffy was there. Uh, Jeffy on his season was actually a very interesting um, thing that he had with Shanice on on his on his season. Um, but watching him interact with Olajuwon and telling him like, you know, yeah, you definitely got to keep a, a life outside of your spouse. That's a real thing. And in and, and, and that sense of like, um, you know, don't just give up everything and it's only the two of you forever, forever, forever. You still got to be able to have some balance. Yeah, but after he met with him, he, they go into the place before the getaway when they meet up with Noe and Steve. Mm -hmm. That whole conversation felt scripted. <laughs> It just felt like scripted, like, you know, here's what I'm going to do. And you should go hang with your friends. And I just felt really scripted. It didn't seem like all the, the talk they had before. Mm -hmm. So I think this whole thing, this whole, where are they now? It was. It's all just kind of this fake still. And why y'all like this show? Why do you want to keep watching it? They're lying to you. <laughs> You've been well, flim flam, hoodwinked. Well, Bam where rules. are they now was not originally a part of this. So, I mean, this is, an ad, this is part of the added fluff, another episode so that it could sell some more advertising, um, you know, and, and that's that's what you're seeing. And here's what they're doing to even ramp that up some more. All of a sudden, Chris and Olivia from um, from the New Orleans season, um, and I remember Olivia, and I think this is this is a good match from for, for Chris um, here, but you can see that this was... All right, well, you two should probably meet. You know, here's what we should do. How about you two message each other, see what happens. I think it's a good match. And I actually think Olivia is an upgrade. She's much more attractive than Alyssa and definitely has a much better personality. Yeah. But this goes, let me, let me say it two parts. First part, happy for Chris and Olivia. If this is a real thing, it's not like some setup. Happy for them. Great. Seems like they vibe pretty well. I think that Olivia handled herself well because I'm sure she's like, wait a minute, you want me to go to the getaway and all this drama is going to be there. She I handled it easily, cool. though. Mm -hmm. She did. But it almost felt like this is why I don't like it because, okay, we took care of Chris. What are we going to do to make it up to Alyssa for the way we portrayed her on this show? Oh, let's call Ryan over in Texas. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> that was so great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's I'm just like crazy, Ryan. Yeah, but, crazy but, but think about this. 
Crazy Ryan, crazy Alyssa, he is exactly what she said she was. Look, the experts gave her what she said she needed at first, right? And she was like, you didn't listen to me. Oh, really? Well, here, we'll give you exactly what you want. Just for a real quick, let's just see what happens. And then Ryan got to see, like, you know, maybe I should have stuck with my, with Brett in, in Texas because this chick is crazy. <laughs> the friend of my enemy is my enemy. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I don't that whole... all the friends, but I feel yeah. betrayed. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, there's, it's just, uh, it, I just feel like all this was just BS, personally. No, what was BS, really and truly, is the fact that they allowed Ryan to bowl in boots. How do you let that man tear up your good bowling um, alley lane with some cowboy boots? Seriously? And if you or I, if you or I were in there trying to bowl in some cowboy boots or even some Tims, come on. I can't say that that would happen. You never know. Whatever. <laughs> I, I don't want to make a hasty generalization or an assumption. Just maybe. <sighs> um, Noy and Steve. And I can't believe that he's got to bribe her to move in the house. And, and I do believe, again, it's this home renovation so she could cut the time from six months to three months to move in. Is that a real argument again? Or is this one of these other arguments just for the show? I was still tripping on the three kid thing. Like that's still a conversation. <laughs> have one first. You know, have one first. You haven't even done mm-hmm. that yet. You might get twins the first time. And you might be like, no, I like what Steve tried to do the Jedi mind trick. Why don't we mm-hmm. watch these three kids? Mm-hmm. So you can see what it's like. And I think Noah got a little bit of reality, but why are they still on this three kid thing? I thought it was dumb. And then now that she wants to move up, maybe because of some backsplash. Oh, now I can move in. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> there, you need there's no backsplash here. Yeah, there's no backsplash. <laughs> I can't live in here. <laughs> I grew up poor. This looks like the place I grew up in when I was a kid. We didn't have a backsplash. And I always said, I'm going to have a back. It's like I'm just like, whatever. If it wasn't even a fancy backsplash. It was plain white. Yeah, it's just nothing. So I'm like, if, if that's if that's what it took with some backsplash for her to move up her move-in date three months, I wonder, I wonder what would happen if he put a bidet in the house. Would she be like, tomorrow? <laughs> no, Mohammed might move in. <laughs> so, you know, they get to this getaway. Um, and uh, interesting... I think just in the sense of it looked like the getaway was literally one night, right? Because everything happened all within a span of 24 hours. Um, Alyssa wearing her I'm a good person shirt, of course, got the merch on. You know, um, Elajuan got his I'm not talk, I'm talking with you, not at you T-shirt on. I'm like, all right, so everybody's trying to sell their merch now. OK, I, I see it. <laughs> and then you get Landfall Lindsay. No more Lindsay to Lohan. Landfall Lindsay, because everybody's waiting for Lindsay to make landfall at the getaway. <laughs> Anticipating the fireworks. And she brought no. Well, well, you got to look at how it started. Melissa had to get Jasmina, Cantina, and spill the tea. Let me tell you about Ryan. Oh, my God. And they, <laughs> they get all gossipy about that. Like, there was just, can you, am I wrong? Am I wrong for that? You're I, always wrong. <laughs> yeah. And Jasmina's like, I normally she is, but I. I see her point this time. I, mean, I just don't get it. And then. <laughs> That's because Jasmine you know, and Alyssa are actually twins separated at birth. <laughs> I, was wait, I was waiting to see what was going to happen when Lindsay got there. Mm-hmm. And I was pleasantly. I was pleasantly surprised, even though this is all fake. But pleasantly surprised about all the different interactions that happened at the getaway. You know, um, I don't know how we're going to talk about those if it's because there's a few things. Yeah, no, go, I'll tell you what, let's go by each one, which because there's some of these that I wasn't too happy about in the way that it happened. So let's so start with first one on your mind. First one on my mind was Lindsay and Steve and Noe. All right. And what'd you think of that one? I I thought it was great that Lindsay apologize and i think she was sincere yeah another apology. sincere apology yes but what i like about steve 
is he went straight HR mode on her and I freaking loved it. And he's like, hey, I hear your apology. I understand that. I'm just going to have to see some improvement in your behavior <laughs> over the course of time for me to feel better about this. <laughs> Did he just put her on a pip? Did he put her yeah. on a 30-day pip? He put her on a 30-day action plan. Here's the thing. <laughs> and at the end, he puts, you know, Lindsay, we really want to see you be successful here <laughs> at Married at First Sight. We want to see you thrive and grow. <laughs> These behaviors have to change because that's holding you back from being the best teammate that you can be, okay? So we're going to meet again next Friday. <laughs> Yeah. Weekly check in. Anyway, now you know what my expectations are. So here, here are the here are the rules of my performance improvement plan. As long as yeah. you follow this, we can keep moving forward. <laughs> I know they look unattainable, but they're really not. That's in your head. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. That, I was like, why is he saying it like that? And you're right. That's exactly what it is. HR. I've never been on a, on a pip before, so. Um, I had no idea that's how the conversation went, but you know, <laughs> yeah, it went straight HR mode on her. I was like, "Get him!" He knows a couple things. <laughs> but speaking of Lindsay, though, her interaction I thought with Mark was so good. It looks like you know they have the pressure of, of being married is off, right? They are no, they're no longer committed to each other, so now they can just have fun. Because whenever they did let their guards down and just be free, they had fun together. And that's one mm -hmm. thing that they both admitted. And you saw this when they're just sitting there. Um, and, and even they're like, wait a minute, y'all got divorced. She's making you your plate. <laughs> and I love that. There was genuine laughter between the two of them and just, hey, all right, cool. Even though he wasn't sure how she was going to be when she walked in. Yeah, I think they just put it behind them. We signed the papers. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. You've apologized. I've apologized. When they were at the uh, lawyer's office, mm -hmm. I think they had a great moment. They're like, hey, let's just move on. And we don't have to do this. But so after the lawyer's office, I didn't expect any tension between her and Mark. I was thinking more Alyssa. Or I thought right. Alyssa was going to confront her about Ryan. Right. Which uh, that would have been great. Um, be just because Alyssa would have flipped out even more and, you know, dropped some more WWTs. But, you know, she didn't. So she avoided that. Um, I thought it was interesting that Jasmine and Michael, when, um, when they walked in, they hugged each other. And... I'm glad they sat down and had a conversation because it was something that was weighing on Michael's mind. But I thought that he was damn rude interrupting her talking to Olivia, who is literally sitting there. Um, there's nobody else there talking to her. Interrupt that conversation to go like, hey, well, Jasmine, I, 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 can I have a conversation with you? She should have been like, no, I'm talking to Olivia. I'll see you when I'm done. <laughs> hey, uh, Jasmine, can I talk to you for a couple ticks? Um, no. <laughs> I, so I didn't like that at all. I was like, Michael, you were done. When you're done, you don't need closure. You don't need exactly. to have a conversation. You're done. So if you're done, move on. You know, but there was nothing that Jasmino was going to say where he'd be like, oh, shit, I didn't think of it that way. My bad. Yeah. And there's nothing that she was going to say like, oh, well, that's a good point, Michael. I didn't think of it that way. My bad. There's no point. Just let it go. You know what? That's the man up part of you and the man up part of me that thinks that way because he needed closure in order to move on. Um, dude, you knew it was time to move on a long time ago. And, you know, y'all, if you know this from the honeymoon, you're going to be on one side, she's going to be the on, on the other, and there is no meeting in the middle. There's the only compromise is we agree to disagree. It has not changed this entire time. Why did you think it was going to be different? You think she's going to be like, you know what? You're right. I did give up on us. She's never going to tell you that. She's not. But she was never interested in you from the very beginning. There was exactly. nothing Michael could have done to make Jasmina like him or even damp. I wouldn't even say moist, just damp. He couldn't even <laughs> pull that up. So, <laughs> so there was nothing he could have done. She was not interested in him at all. And she's got to put it all on him and say that he didn't mm -hmm. do X, Y, Z. He's going to put it all on her. And I'm as we've watched this as spectators, you know what? You're both right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know what I didn't understand? And this is the one thing I... Because Chris said this to Olivia. It's like, you know, there is no tension, no awkward moments to have because this is why. And he laid it out with Olivia. And then Alyssa comes up and taps him and, hey, um... 
Can, can I talk to you for a minute? My response would have been, no. <laughs> that would have been the end of the conversation. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> so, like I said at the reunion, that was her moment to apologize the right mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. She didn't do it. And so now, realizing how hard it is for her to date, because no one wants her crazy self, Mm -hmm. And she's getting killed on social media. This was her opportunity to be like, hey. And she apologized. I think that was good of her. Great. It's not going to make a difference. People, Twitter was just tearing her up all night last night. And <laughs> it's not going to make a difference, you know. Um, but I think Chris deserved that. Yeah. I think Chris deserved it. She doesn't care. Like, she doesn't feel it. But... Chris deserved that apology. Nobody deserves a hollow apology. And I'm sorry. Yes, it was. Was it more sincere than the reunion? It's a smidgen. But it wasn't real. I'm sorry. This is where I am you. Forget the apology tour. Don't say shit. Just, you know what? It's okay. We don't have to speak. We can be in the same room. You don't exist. I don't see you. You don't see me. We're absolutely fine. But for Chris's, and this is my thought, and y'all hit me up in the comments and tell me what you think. To have someone treat you badly mm -hmm. and you did nothing wrong and there's their main reason is they're not attracted to you and all that stuff, the way she treated him, that can just fuck with you up here. You know I mean? I think it's just, it can mess with a person's self-esteem and it's not fair. True. And so I mm -hmm. feel like what she was doing to him was all, I wouldn't call it bullying. It's not a Mark deal, but he didn't deserve to have all that stuff said about him, you know, um, off camera, on camera. And so mm -hmm. she owed him that apology. And I think that helped him be able to. It's great to say, you know what? I don't care. Da, da, da. You know, now I know I've said there's people that I'm like, hey, I'm done with and I wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire. Yeah. But it'd be nice to hear that apology. I've had someone that had someone that hurt me years ago. And it was like, when I say years ago, it was a good 10 years that she called me out the blue and to apologize. And it felt, I, you know, I moved on from it and all that, but it still felt good. Yeah. Because all, all that time, every night you had that one thought, like, how did I mess that up? What did I do? And you realize, okay, it wasn't me mm -hmm. all this time. So I think Chris deserved that. Okay. And I get where that comes from. Um, so two things on that, right? Yours is, I, here's why I look, view yours differently. That wasn't done on camera for the purpose of the closure on the show, right? Um, if she'd call him off camera and told him that, great. I, I, I would respect that. Um, I think the producers told her, all right, well, just do this, you know? And this was, this was all part of the deal. And that's what, I think that was all part of the deal and why she actually did it on camera. I don't think it's genuine at all. And that's why I give her nothing on it. Now, for Chris, I think, and you and I have talked about this before. At some point in time, we'll actually talk about it here on the podcast. But sometimes you have to forgive the person who has wronged you in order to move on. I had to do that. In the same way, like you said, you needed that apology from, from this person, you know, years down the road. And just and not that you needed it, but it really helped. I never got that apology. I don't care for that apology. But in order for me to move on, and me not to allow stuff to eat me up inside, I had to forgive that person for what they did wrong, whether they see it or not. And if they gave a fake apology that I thought was fake, I'd be more insulted than no, no apology at all. Because like you, in the sense of the no apology tour, and that's what I think this whole list of things. If I'm in Chris's shoes, and I get it, I'm not Chris. But I would have told her, keep your goddamn apology. Well, this is how the world can tell you're not a Scorpio, because that wouldn't work for me. <laughs> I, I, I can't just, I just can't, hey, I'm going to forgive and let it go. No, I can't. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could wind up 30 years from now, go to their funeral, just at, at the wake, just lean in. I hate you. <laughs> oh, and, but, and keep in mind. But here's, here's, here's why I think Chris needed the apology publicly, mm -hmm. because he was embarrassed mm -hmm. publicly. So then okay. you should apologize publicly don't talk all that trash about me on national tv mm -hmm. and then try to give me a fall like call like hey chris you know all that stuff i did you didn't deserve that and like apologize you know privately nope 
You embarrass me publicly, you apologize publicly. You know what, though? I think he was um, given some sort of uh, relief in the fact that they allowed Alyssa to show her true colors and show it was not Chris when they gave her Ryan. But she was so smitten <laughs> over. And then she showed that, no, it really is you. You are not a good person. Now, Married at First Sight should drop that merch. <laughs> I bet you it will sell really fast. I'll buy one right now. You are not a good person. <laughs> I would rock that t-shirt. <laughs> Actually, no, I couldn't because then that's going to make people think I like Married at First Sight. Yeah, and you I got to tell the story. Where'd you get the t shirt? I watched Married at First Sight. <laughs> no. And now I'm watching season 15. A Family Guy? Yes. I have not seen season 15 of Family Guy. And it's on my to do list now that uh-huh. I have a free Wednesday night. <laughs> we have until July 6th, folks. All the prayer warriors need you to unite. We have until July 5th. Actually, I'll say July 5th because we at least got to get them set to get going on July 6th. OK, um, July 6th is when season 15 starts. San Diego, Devon Franklin, Megan Good's ex-husband. Um, and it's going to be the reason why I'm interested to see what happens when he's on there as an expert is because this is a man who was purposely crying, took the time to take his phone out, take a picture of himself crying to post on social media with a caption. What's I got to hear what you have to say about this man. <laughs> Don't try to get quiet on me now. <laughs> Don't try to tease me. Don't tr- don't don't try to tease <sighs> me with some drama. Pro- Prayer warriors unite. We'll see you in the comments. Um, don't forget Sunday we've got our next review of 90 Day Fiance, um, season 9. And then, of course, Monday, we drop the audio for our regular episode. Tuesday, video drops on YouTube right back here. Um, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Season 15, Married at First Sight on Wednesday, family starting guy. July 6th. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, Family Guy. Season 15. <laughs> <sighs> I'm working, guys. Help me out. I'm trying. <laughs> hey, I'm Yanni Root. And I'm just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts or some of the bullshit you find on the internet. We'll talk about it on the show. It's a regular guy's random thoughts podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Gotta stop drinking them Red Bulls. Man, I need it. I had a long night last night. Jeez. Something kill you.